Are you intimidated by setting up a rotary on a Galvo laser? Check out this video where I show you just how simple it can be. Hey everyone, I'm Brett and this is my laser garage. My wife and I run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you out with growing your laser or CNC business with real-world projects and tips that actually work. Today, we're diving into a topic a lot of folks have asked me about, how to set up a Chuck-style rotary on a Galvo laser. It might seem a little intimidating at first, but I'm here to show you it's actually a pretty easy and straightforward process. For this demo, I'll be adding the Pyburn Grip 2 Chuck Rotary to my Commarker Omni One UV laser. Once you've got this dialed in, you unlock a whole new world of fun and profitable projects. I'll show you one of my favorites, engraving wine bottles, which are always a crowd pleaser and a great seller. Let's jump in. All right, let's talk hardware first. I'm using the Pyburn Grip 2 from Lens Digital, a rock solid Chuck style rotary with a great build quality, strong grip, and honestly, a pretty fair price point for what you get. I prefer chuck rotaries over roller styles because of the versatility. Being able to grip the front, back, outside, or even the inside of an object gives you way more control, especially when working with uneven or tapered surfaces like wine bottles, mugs, or glassware. That said, there are plenty of great chuck style rotaries out there, and the setup steps I'm about to walk you through will work with just about any of them. So whether you're using a Pyburn, a Rotoboss Talon, or even a basic D80 style rotary, the fundamentals still apply. One quick note before we dive in though. This setup assumes your Galvo laser is already configured correctly, either by importing the proper core file into Lightburn or by manually entering your laser's parameters. If that's not done yet, make sure to get your machine dialed in first before continuing with the rotary installation. To begin the installation, we'll place the rotary directly on the bed of the Omni One. Use the threaded inserts on the laser bed to secure it into your preferred orientation. Personally, I like to position my rotaries on the right side of the bed, aligned along the X axis, and that's what I'll be showing you in this setup. I'm starting here by roughly aligning the rotary with the center of the laser lens, but we'll fine tune that in a later step. You'll also notice I'm using an extension plate on top of the laser bed. While it's not strictly necessary, I like having it in place when working with longer objects, like the wine bottles we'll be engraving later. Since we'll be using almost the full work area of the Omni One, the rotary needs to cantilever slightly over the right side of the machine. You can do this without the extension plate, but I prefer giving the rotary a little bit extra support. I picked this plate up on Etsy a while back and I'll drop a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Now that the rotary is roughly in place, it's time to fine tune its position. First, I'll open up Lightburn and draw a straight line that spans nearly the entire width of the work area. Hold down shift while drawing to keep it perfectly horizontal, then press P to center it on the workspace. I'll set this line to a tool layer and hit the frame button. Back at the machine, I chuck a pencil into the jaws of the rotary. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be a pencil, a small dowel works great too. You just need something long enough to visually project the framing line from Lightburn. Using the green viewing paddle, I align the rotary so that the laser's projected line is centered and runs straight along the entire length of the pencil. I'm also making sure the projected work area avoids the jaws of the chuck, since I'll need as much usable space as possible for my design. My engraving is going to start at about one inch up from the base of the wine bottle, so I'm positioning the line to just begin beyond where the jaws end. And once everything is aligned and in position, I lock it all down. With the rotary now in its final position, we'll jump back into Lightburn to complete the setup. I'm gonna walk you through the basic Lightburn configuration and share the settings I'm using for this install. If you're looking to dive deeper into the rotary settings or want more technical breakdown, I'll drop a couple of helpful links in the description. One from Lightburn's own channel and one from Laser Everything's YouTube channel. This way you can explore further if needed. They do an awesome job of explaining all this in much detail. Go ahead and open the rotary setup menu under the Laser Tools tab. Set the rotary type to Chuck and make sure the Enable Rotary box is checked. You can leave Reverse Rotary unchecked for the Omni One at least in my case, but depending on your laser's configuration, you might need to enable it. If your designs are coming out mirrored or engraved backwards, 
that's a sign you should toggle this setting. I also like to check the return to starting point option so the chuck rotates back to where it began after the job finishes. Next are the split size and overlap settings. I usually go with a split size of 0.04 millimeters and zero overlap. These values work well for my typical projects, but again, if you want a deeper dive into what these settings do, I've linked some excellent videos in Lightburn's own official documentation down in the description. Finally, you need to set your rotary's axis. This tells Lightburn which direction your object will rotate during the engraving. For my setup, I have selected the Y axis since that's how the rotary is oriented on the Omni-1. Next, let's talk rotary settings. In this section, you'll see fields for steps per rotation, diameter, and circumference. Steps per rotation refers to how many steps the rotary motor takes to complete a full 360 degree spin. This value will vary depending on your laser and rotary, but your rotary's manual should provide a solid starting point. For my setup, I began with 18,750 steps. To test if that number is accurate, here's a quick method. Place a piece of tape across the rotary chuck and its base. Draw a straight line across both and press the test button in Lightburn. The rotary should spin exactly one full rotation and return to the starting point. If it stops short, increase the steps per rotation. If it overshoots, decrease the number. As you can see in my case, the recommended value needed a little work. So I kept increasing my steps per rotation because I wasn't making a full 360 degree turn. In my case, I settled on 48,000 steps per rotation to get a full 360 degree turn. Now this is a simple test. And once you've got it set correctly, you won't need to touch it again. Last but not least is the object diameter. This refers to the actual physical diameter of the item you're engraving. It's important to measure this as accurately as possible or your engravings will come out skewed. I highly recommend using a quality set of digital calipers to do so. Once you enter the diameter, Lightburn will automatically calculate the circumference for you. As for the motor speed settings, I just stick with the default values here provided by Lightburn. They've consistently worked well in my experience and I've found no need to change them. All right, now that we're set up, let's put this rotary to work. For this project, I'll be engraving both a red and a white wine bottle. Custom wine bottle engraving is hugely popular in my area, especially for real estate closings and corporate gifting. They make standout presents for housewarmings, retirements, client thank yous, just about any kind of celebration. And with a setup like the Omni One and Piper and Grip, you can produce them quickly, cleanly and with ease. I start by taking measurements of the bottle's diameter and inputting that into the rotary setup menu in Lightburn. I'll next extend the jaws on the rotary and securely grip the base of the bottle. Wine bottles can be a bit slick, so I'm using the long rubber jaws that come with the Pyburn. They do a great job of keeping the bottle stable during engraving. You'll also notice I've added an extra component for additional support. This rear bottle support is an optional accessory from Lens Digital and it's especially helpful when chucking up heavier items like wine bottles to prevent wobble or sag during rotation. Now I need to make sure the bottle is level. This is done with a small level placed on top of the bottle. Make sure to check for level throughout all parts of your engravable area and adjust accordingly. An unlevel bottle or cup will not engrave consistently. After I'm happy with leveling my bottle, I need to make sure I adjust the focus of the Omni One. I like to use a focus stick that I created to do this accurately. Focus is extremely important. Being out of focus only a couple millimeters, either in or out, will ruin your engravings, especially on glass. So take your time and make sure this is right. At this point, we're just about ready to go. But before I hit start, I need to frame the design and double check its placement. I'm using the green framing paddle again that comes with the Omni One to make sure everything lines up exactly and where I want it. My goal is to have the design start just above the grips of the rotary jaws. Thanks to how I positioned the rotary earlier, I'm able to take full advantage of the Omni One's work area and its 150 millimeter lens. Whenever possible, I also like to engrave the entire design in one pass. This way I avoid any potential alignment issues. And with nearly seven inches of engraving space from the 150 millimeter lens, I've got more than enough room to get it all done cleanly and in a single go. One last thing though before we press start, triple check everything. Make sure your bottle is level, properly focused, framed exactly where you want it, and then all your settings are correct. I cannot stress this enough. Wine bottles aren't hard to engrave, but they are very easy to mess up, and that can get expensive fast. It's one thing if you're practicing on a $5 bottle, but when you're working on a $100 gift bottle for a client, the pressure is real. So take your time, 
double or triple check everything before you hit start. I'm all good here, so time to engrave. While the Omni One is doing its thing, let me take a quick moment to say, if you're finding value in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Here in the Laser Garage, I'm all about helping makers, hobbyists, and small business owners just like you get more confident and more profitable with your laser or CNC setup. Whether you're just getting started or looking to grow a full-time engraving business, I've got content that speaks directly to where you're at. Real-world machine reviews, tips to improve your workflow, and behind the scene looks at how my wife and I run our full-time engraving business right here out of our garage. Every like, comment, and subscription not only helps this channel grow, it tells me what kind of content is most helpful to you. And trust me, there's a lot more on the way, from machine comparisons and advanced tutorials to profitable project ideas and business building tips. So if you wanna get better results with your gear and learn from someone else who's in the trenches with you, go ahead and subscribe. It means a lot to me. So these wine bottles came out fantastic straight off the laser, but there's one more step that really makes them pop, paint fill. By adding paint to the engraved areas, we boost the contrast and make the design stand out even more. This is especially useful on clear bottles where the engraving alone can sometimes be hard to see. The good news, it's way easier than you might think. There's no masking required because the acrylic paint I'm using only sticks to the rough engraved surfaces, not the smooth glass around it. So all you really have to do is rub the paint into the engraving, then wipe it off right away. That's it. If there are any stubborn spots that don't wipe clean, just add a little rubbing alcohol to your rag. It'll take the excess paint off in seconds. Simple, clean, and super effective. And that's a wrap on this project. We successfully set up the Piper and Grip rotary on the Commarker Omni One, fine-tuned the settings in Lightburn, and knocked out two beautifully engraved wine bottles. These kinds of projects not only look incredible, but they also offer serious value. Whether you're making gifts for clients, weddings, real estate closings, or really any kind of celebration. But wine bottles are just the beginning. With a setup like this, you can engrave all kinds of glassware, pint glasses, whiskey glasses, wine glasses, and even stainless steel tumblers of all sizes. From personalized gifts to branded promo items, the possibilities really open up once you've got a rotary dialed in on a UV laser like the Omni One. And if you're thinking about adding the Omni One to your shop, do me a huge favor and use the affiliate link in the description below. It won't cost you anything extra, but it helps support the channel and lets me keep creating real world content just like this to help you grow your skills and your business. Thanks a lot for hanging out in the garage today. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, please. Leave a comment if you've got questions and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Until then, keep creating. I'll see you on the next one.